Hey, okay, g'day guys, Sam here from Trade to Prosper. Looking at graph, or the graph, and uh, I know there's a lot of people interested in this chart because of the, the hype, or the more so the, the token. So when we look at this, there's a, there's a few strategies that come into mind, and um, you know what, this is perfectly placed, this resistance. And I'll explain how this resistance comes about and how, how much confidence it has with a certain ways of looking at it. And therefore, we cannot go bullish based on a few other things at the moment. So what we can do, talk about is explain the chart and then narrow it down to this area and then talk about opportunities. Okay. So this is a weekly chart. Um, and I've got my weekly levels based on the, the candlesticks that are appropriate to this. Um, you can say that's a weekly level just below it. So if we lose that level here, understand that we broke the, the trend on the weekly. So it's, that's not a good thing. So that is our uh, worst case scenario. It's if we lose that level, we lose the weekly level. And then for the trend, for this local trend, it's going to be changed. From a macro perspective, we need to break this level from the weekly to change the trend. Because that is, so when we look at it from here, the highest point, we go lower highs. Let me get this right. Sorry, lower lows. Lower highs. And then you can say lower lows. And realistically, that is a, a lower high, lower low. So we need to break this trend. And we haven't. Now, the good thing about this is <clears throat> it does look like left shoulder, head, and even if we come around here, it could be a right shoulder and a breakout. So what we have here is a reference point. We have one touch, two touches, third touch might be able to get through. And depending on how much it pulls back. And we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to it. So this is coming from a, a bit of experience in terms of the inverted bar um, trade. And uh, usually I like to see four touches. Okay. And that will establish a, uh, four touches usually explain, um, confirms it's a major resistance line. So when you break that major resistance line, it becomes bullish. So that was our second, um, realistically, that was our third touch. Moving forward, uh, let's explain this trend line. This trend line, in my opinion, is accurate because when I do this, remove that, I just looked at the, the top and the body of this level, I ignore this wick. And I just extended it and um, pretty much right on the dot. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the, I thought I'd better look at it in another way as well. And I did it. And what's good about this, this particular method is that it looks at the body of the candle. So it just ignores wicks. You can change a whole chart to change, to remove the wicks, but I did it this way. So I look for the best suited line. And, and this was my best suited line. As you can see right there, this is confluent as a secondary trend line and look perfectly hitting that level as well. So that from a weekly perspective, that is our resistance. Right there, we're not, we're not going past it at the moment. So that's why we've got the rejection from the weekly trend line. So now if we go back to the candlesticks, okay, and you can see how it's actually right, right below it. So that in a sense, is bearish. Now, if we were to try something else, let's try this. Let's look at this channel. Do we see any confluence? Roughly we do. Because when you look at it as a channel, a lot of resistance there, support there, middle of the channel, and uh, obviously the bottom. So this channel, if we were to break this channel, it, it, it so our, our, our direction is that way. So we get, we're in the downtrend. We haven't changed direction on the macro level. But if we were to break this channel, so this is on the extreme of the channel, extreme levels of the channel. We're not in there yet. So we need to close above it. We might close in that area. And then that will be an opportunity. So we need to get past this secondary channel. Roughly, it's probably about 78% of the from there to there. So we, we're close, but not, not enough. If we were to apply uh, Fibonacci to it, 
And let's just do that. Where's my one there? Let me just get rid of that. It's too thick. Exactly, 78%. Right on the dot. So we might just come down and hit this lower, this 70, um, golden ratio one. If we were to come back down, um, it might just come down and hit one of these. Um, so we might, and you can see the 200 moving averages. So if this was to come across, that might be a good spot. Now we're going to look at it from a, a Fibonacci perspective. I'm trying to explain a bunch of stuff that hopefully you're familiar with. And uh, moving forward. So the fact that if we look, look at this on the daily, and I want to get rid of that line I just did manually. Uh, okay, I'll just leave it there for a sec. Um, it's just getting close. Right. These are based on these areas where I saw a stop. And let's just see what we can do here. Let me get my thoughts together on presenting this info. Now, where's my Fibonacci? That one there? No. That's the one there. So what we've done with this Fibonacci is measure the top, current resistance, and our reference point. So we've got the golden ratio roughly there with this 200 moving average. So that, that is a strong support level. It might come back all the way down here and then go back up. That's, that's one option. Or the 0.5, which has got another 200. So we're going to get a response. And what I think it's an ABC move. Um, at the moment, would it go for a double top? Maybe we'll have a look at that. But I do feel like these are the levels that we're likely to come down to if Bitcoin was to continually drop and find uh, its range. Um, so that those are the two levels of interest for the time being, based on the Fibonacci. And based on, you can see that, that level, hmm, that might not do it. This level might do it as well. So I'm looking for confluence, but the moving averages are, are good. If I was to add one more moving average, let's see this. The 10 and 20 moving average. Now I want to get rid of the cross, and now we're going to come in close. So we'll look at the four hour chart. Let's have a look at it close. The four hour trend was good enough at most of it, but at some points, yeah. So the four hour chart was really big here. So the four hour chart's probably good, but you can see why I put these demand areas on where it stopped. So it stopped on the 200 moving average, then it stayed stayed underneath and then broke above it and then kept on going. Here it failed, found that a support or the Fibonacci and so on. So these moving averages have some story to tell. Now we've broken the four hour, as you can see. So that's bearish. The, the issue I have with this chart is that from there all the way down there, is 38 percent pullback usually anything above 20 25 percent means it's a topping off structure so it's unlikely to break it anytime soon I, I see this coming down deeper and the fact that we've got a rejection here as well just below there as you can see it did wick up but it did come down so we might so either this level might be a new ranging bottom or this one here. I'm yet to be confirmed uh, confirm based on the Wyckoff. So what we have from a Wyckoff perspective, this is a buying climax, automatic response, or is it going to be here, automatic response? And so we only got part of the puzzle. If it comes down here, there'll be an automatic response, and then we have up thrust. So if, it, if it's here, it's going to be a good opportunity to get in, and I think um, we'll do the secondary test somewhere around here. And then we'll, we'll see this type of stru structure. If it goes up like that, even better. But I, I doubt that's going to happen. But you never know. But I'm looking for the Wyckoff reaccumulation structure. But it might be just reaccumulation here. 
and that fits into our narrative it might come back down more lower and if it fits into the narrative that we are looking for the, the next next touch which is we're looking for the third or the fourth touch and so what we have is this is one cycle this is a second cycle we're looking for the third cycle the third cycle might so as i said the third cycle might come down here or there and that's the third cycle for the breakout and this is a nice pattern for a reversal so that was the major one and then the third one usually smaller so you think of an inverted head and shoulders very similar sometimes it, it if it goes really bear shape, pear shape it just dumps so for that's for bitcoin to really lose support that will that will happen so that is my my approach looking for this level um just be patient that's what i'm going to do i'm going to look for small trades if i can um i posted one i'm shorting shorting against bitcoin at the moment so that is it's working for me that was a that would have been a good entry there um so i do see this coming back down um but like i said we have some moving averages and fibonacci that's the weekly level so we've got the weekly level we came down through the weekly level we didn't touch the other second weekly level so if it might hold it i'm going to keep an eye on this because that could be like that as well so that could be a a b c and then back down and that could be a, a bigger picture a b c yeah so it's a bit confusing here but that's those are the things i'm looking for meanwhile I, I, i'm looking for the demand area that i'll be more probably averaging in in those areas so that's all i got uh, hopefully it gives you some idea on how to approach this market uh, there is no definites because there's no definites on Bitcoin as well. So what Bitcoin does, if it holds its level, then we probably won't come back much. But if it keeps dropping, um, stay tuned for the other updates on, on Bitcoin um, as time progresses. At the moment, there's not much to report. Weekend, there's not going to be much happening. So um, And usually when it does happen on the weekend, um, it gets changed as soon as it comes Monday. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, hopefully that gives you some idea. Oh, the last one, I forgot the last part. Yeah, let me just get rid of that. That was the last Fibonacci uh, that there. So you can see the other Fib. So we, we use our top just just below. That's um, the weekly, ex excluding the wicks and, and the bottom. And you can see it hit the 0.382 as well. So looking from that perspective, and where are we? They just put the 0.2386. That is aligned with the um, weekly as well. So that price, 236, 382, that, that is a good area, in my opinion, for support. At the moment, it's on this weekly. If we drop that weekly, I think it's it's likely to come down to this Fibonacci as a strong, strong support. All right, that's it. Um, please give me a like, share, come and join our Telegram group. And uh, it's a 20 day free trial, be part of the community. Hopefully, you can contribute and uh, make new online friends. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Cheers.